Hello, I'm Kendall Moss. About four or five years ago, the main public broadcasting network produced a television series called In the Kitchen. This series showcased the talents of some of Maine's favorite humorists, and I was fortunate enough to be chosen as its host. Fall's coming to a close, leaves are gone, wood's in the shed, garden's all done. Time to take a rest and see if I can survive another main winter. By the time the snow gets halfway up over the windows and I look out over the drifts and see that the only thing left alive is one damn fool bird on his way south, I begin to wonder if I'm gonna make it. Sure, this is God's country, but he don't spend the winter here. Well, since I can't go south, I usually just sit around and hope a friend will drop by in the evening for a little story swapping. About the only thing you can say about these stories is that we seldom let the truth get in the way of a good laugh. Well, I'm not saying they're all lies, you understand. There's a lot of truth in them. But sometimes it's stretched tighter than a banjo string. Another fellow from Hartford, Connecticut came up here to Maine, you know, to go uh, deer hunting. And he got into this uh, hunting camp, and there was a whole bunch of other hunters there. And he was the newest man in the crowd, and he'd never been in the woods before in his life. And it was dark, and he was scared of Maine woods. But it was his turn to go get a bucket of water. Well, he didn't want to go, but he took that bucket anyway, and he went down to the pond to get a bucket of water for the camp. A few minutes later, back he come and he took the door right off the hinges when he came in through and he was scared to death. His eyes was walled right out like two doorknobs and he'd lost the pail. And the guide says, what's the matter with you? Well, he says, when he got his breath back, he says, there's a bear in that pond. Well, the guide says, hell, that bear is as, at least as much afraid of you as you are of him. And the tenderfoot, he says, well, if that's the case, that water ain't fit to drink anyway. The other day, I left my fiddle in the car. <clears throat> and when I thought of it, we were out somewhere else. I told my little girl, I said, when we get home, you be sure and remind me to bring that fiddle in out of the car. Well, she's uh, seven. Well, she remembers that fiddle. She said, what's it doing in the car? And I said, well, I took it out and had it repaired. And she thought a couple of seconds, and then she says, is it still squeak? <laughs> yeah. You ever hear the story about the uh, about the two fellows that was in the old-fashioned privy? No. And at the same time, it was a two-hole or a cause. Well, one of them stood up, and when he stood up, he lost a handful of change down mm -hmm. through the hole. So he starts peeling off his overalls, took out his wallet, and threw a five-dollar bill down the hole. And the other fellow, you know, he's wondering what the hell this guy's up to. So yeah. he says, hey, he says, what the hell are you doing? Are you cracking up? The fellow says, no. He says, I ain't cracking up. You don't think I'm crazy enough to go down in there for a few cents worth of change, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well make the trip worth worthwhile. Yeah, worthwhile. You know, you mentioned bear. I had an experience with a bear one time, too. I was picking blueberries, and all of a sudden, this old big she-bear rose right up, right up in front of me, let out a hell of a roar. And I took off running, and I run as hard as I could. And I looked back, and the bear was still there. And I run for miles. Running after you? He was after me. Yeah. She was after me. Well, this went on, as I say, quite a little while. You know, the only way I could get clear of that damn bear 
after a while there was to run across the ice that had just frozen over just a little bit. And it was just enough to hold my weight. But that bear weighed four or five hundred pounds and it wouldn't hold her and she fell through the ice and I got away. Now, wait a minute. Uh, you said you was blueberrying. Yeah. And, and uh, that would have to be in, in, uh, in the summertime and, and, and then you come to the ice and that'd have to be in, in the wintertime. Now, uh, th that just don't make no sense. Oh, well, I just forgot to mention that damn thing chased me from the middle of the summer till Christmas. God, Kendall. Sometimes, you know, I, I find it awful hard to believe you. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing about you. 